book of Deuteronomy. That would be the fifth book in the Bible of, of Moses' book, Deuteronomy. God gave to him. Anybody who knows a, some about the Bible knows that God's dealing with Israel in the Old Testament that God dealt with the nation of Israel like no other nation had ever been dealt with. And you have to rightly divide the word of truth. And if you'll read Deuteronomy 28, you cannot help, you cannot help but draw similarities between God dealing with the, the, them and dealing with us now. It's unavoidable. You have to see the resemblance. Even though we're not in the Old Testament, we're not under law, we do see similarities to how God deals with nations in the Old Testament now. Now what I want you to look at this morning is Deuteronomy 28, and I'm going to show you, he, he gives them all these wonderful promises of how they're going to be blessed like no other nation has ever been blessed. And then he says, if you turn, listen carefully, and worship other gods, then it's going to go the other way. Things are going to be bad. In other words, God told that nation and God tells our nation, you cannot expect to turn away from me and expect, expect me to keep on blessing you like I did when you were serving me. Amen? Amen? Now listen, this morning, let's look here at Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 58. Read it with me carefully. I'll announce the title of this message. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law, He's talking about the Israel, Old Testament law, that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. That's Jehovah God, the God that created everything, the God of the Bible. Not some kind of uh, Shinto, Hindu, Islam, fake God that people have invented. That's the God of the Bible. Look here, verse 59. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance moreover he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt which thou wast afraid of and they shall cleave to thee also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed and ye shall be left few in number whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good, to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth to the other unto the other. And thou shalt serve, there shalt thou serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. He's going to mix up all the other nations come in with false gods. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night and have none assurance of thy life. I want to preach this morning on the subject, the implosion of America. The Lord gave me this thought Monday, and I used some of it down in revival. As I, I was thinking and meditating and, and reading the Bible. I'm going to preach on the implosion of America. Now, I, I need to introduce you to say the difference between explosion and implosion. It's opposite. It'd be just like uh, uh, interior and exterior. Now, what uh, I, I read a story, I heard a story, a preacher tell a story not long ago of how that uh, they were building some big old, going to build a huge building, and there were these giant buildings in the way that had to be taken out. Well, when you're in a big city and you've got a 50 story building, and then right over here is a 80-story building and a 100-story building, you can't just go swinging things in there and knocking them down. They, so he talked to a demolition crew, 
And the demolition crew come in with their experts and people who were trained to get rid of existing buildings. And they sat down and they said, uh, the only way you're going to get rid of this building is, is by implosion. What does implosion mean? They went, they had a team of experts, went into inside of that building, and everywhere there was a, a great uh, foundation of that building, they put dynamite and explosives. And they put it in all these strategic places, and then the date was set. They set the date of a certain time. They were up on another skyscraper watching from two or three blocks away. They had the news cameras there. The pe newspaper was there. Everybody, you want to see it when these mighty buildings just come, and come down to the ground. And he said, uh, uh, he said they, went there, they went down, and they said, all right, is everybody ready? They had a red button for him to push when those buildings would, would be destroyed. And they said, all right, you ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Went all the way down. Two, three, two. One, and he went, boom, and pushed that button. And he said, nothing happened. They were a few blocks away, and he went, oh, my goodness. Don't tell me. This, this is a, I mean, we're on the TV, everything. And he said, in just a few seconds, he saw a little smoke. That dynamite went off, and it went off inside the building. And there, what they didn't tell him was, there's a little pause in between those, that dynamite blowing up, and then he said that building collapsed under its own weight. He said it like a pancake. Bam, 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 bam. Flat down to the ground, and nothing but a plume of smoke come up to where you couldn't even see what was there. And when it all cleared out, it was gone. And he said, that's what implosion. Implosion means destroyed from the inside. Preachers have preached for hundreds of years. They, no outside country could destroy America in our, the, how good God's been to us. America's destruction is going to come from on the inside. We will destroy ourselves unless we turn back to God. And but That's what he told Israel. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. Now, here's what I'm going to preach to you this morning. Uh, the demolition crew has been talked to. Uh, nations have always sinned. Are you listening to me? There's always been sin in every nation. Every sin that I'll mention today, every sin in the Bible has always been in every nation back as far as time gone by. Uh, it's always that way. But there is a difference when the government of that land and people suddenly say, it's not wrong anymore and sanction and even, uh, and even push a sinful lifestyle on its people. God judges nations when the government of that nation turns against Him. Now, just one hour. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you about it this morning. I believe this morning there are three decisions that the government, Supreme Court of America, has made from 1960 this way that's when everything began to change and the explosions have already gone off. We are right now in that pause, that little period where everybody thinks, we're all right, there ain't nothing going to happen before the whole thing collapses. I will back up everything I say today from the Bible and I'm going to preach about the implosion of America. There are three uh, decisions that our court has made. Keep in mind, keep in mind, remember, God judges a country when the government sanctions uh, another God or immorality. In other words, uh, for years, the Bible, uh, the law pretty much outlawed anything the Bible was against. It's, it's, crime, it's, sin, it's crime to murder. It's a crime uh, to, other, uh, to steal. It's crime. You know where we got that? We got that out of the Bible. Without the Bible, there is no moral code. It all come from the Word of God. So the government said, the Bible says that's wrong, so we're, it's a crime punishable uh, uh, to the fullest extent of the law. Now all of a sudden, blam, 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 the three pillars holding up this nation have been dynamited, sanctioned by the government. See, if, if all of a sudden 
the government passed a law and says it's no longer wrong to kill people. That's, that's coming down the road if we keep going the way we're going. It's no longer against the law to kill people. You know where we knew it was wrong to kill people? From that book right there. All right, let me show you these three pillars that have been knocked out from under us. Number one, number one. The first one was in 1962, they made a 22-word voluntary prayer against the law in the public school system. This was us as a nation. The next year, they said the Holy Bible will no longer have a place in the public school system. You need to realize the public school system is raising up the next generation. And ladies and gentlemen, in 1963, by the protests of one atheist named Madeline Mary O'Hara, our Supreme Court voted no more Bible, no more God. And it finally turned into the thing where you cannot even post a copy of the Ten Commandments in the school, public school system without being in danger of, of the court system. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to believe that the highest court of the land passed that law. You know what they said? They, I won't have the quote exact, but they said, if the Ten Commandments are on the walls at a school, the children may read them, and by reading them, they may be, may be uh, 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 subject to believe them and obey them. And we can't have that because that's teaching religion in our school. Now, I'm going to say, you know what happened 118 years before that? 118 years before that, the New Testament and the Old Testament was in the schools and all the way through the 30s and 40s and 50s, kids got Bibles when they went to school. You know what they said? You know what the court said back in 118 years ago? They said the New Testament especially ought to be taught in school because of its, quote, glorious principles of morality. And then they said Congress, or First Amendment, Congress shall make no law on the establishment of religion or exercise, the free exercise thereof. Wow. said, Congress shall not make a law restricting people from practicing their religion. Okay. Then our court says, no Bible, no prayer in our school. And right then began the breakdown and the disintegration of American society. I'm going to tell you it's got work. And that, that's why a few years later, kids take, uh, I mean, if there's no, nothing on the wall that says thou shalt not kill, the next thing you know, you got kids bringing guns to school, killing people. You know why? Weren't taught. Weren't taught to obey them. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the first one. Number two, the second pillar that had the dynamite under it and knocked out from under our country uh, this morning happened in 1973 down in Texas, and it was a Supreme Court decision you and I know as Roe versus Wade. And that decision was the Supreme Court said that a woman shall have the right to terminate her pregnancy or, or, and uh, kill that unborn child if she so chooses. Now, since that happened, we have been in trouble. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about that unborn child. If you're a Christian here this morning and you claim to believe the Bible, you cannot have another position on abortion except what we call pro-life. You just can't do it. You say, well, I'm a Christian and I believe a woman has a right to choose. You're, you're not a Bible-believing Christian or you're extremely ignorant of what the Bible says one or the other. I'm affixing to educate you. Are you listen. Let me tell you what the Bible said. We have now, before I give the Scripture, we have now butchered 50 million babies since that decision was made. In this country, 4,400 a day. 4,000, 400 every day. Trash cans full of little arms and legs and heads, and blood. A nation cannot slaughter its own 
kids without God judging that nation. We wonder why everything's going wrong. Why has God let this happen? Why has God let that happen? I'm telling you right now. We have become calloused and desensitized to human life. How does God deal with a nation that destroys its young? He allowed them uh, Israel. You know what He done? Israel let their children pass through the fire. You remember that Old Testament expression? They would put their kids on the altar to Molech, the Old Testament God, and burn them and give their kids to another God. And you know what God done? He let people from another country come in and make slaves out of them. That's what God did. All right. Let's see what the Bible says. Genesis 16 and verse 11. You know what he told Hagar? Thou art with child. The Holy Spirit said what was inside of a woman's body was a child. Not an unwanted piece of tissue. Not something like a growth or a wart with no, with no soul or feelings. A child. Genesis 19.36 The daughters of Lot were with child by their father. There's a case of incest. And the girls were pregnant, and the babies were born, not slaughtered. I lose a lot of people right there. But if it's wrong to kill that baby, it's wrong to kill the other baby. It don't matter how it got there. If it's a human being, it's still wrong to kill it. My heart would break for incest or rape, but if it's a human life, it's still wrong to kill it. Now, that's old-fashioned as cornbread, but it's still got the ring of truth, don't it? You know I'm telling you the truth today. You listen? Genesis 38, 24. Tamar, thy daughter, is with child. 2 Samuel 11, 5. Bathsheba sent and told David, the product of adultery, cheating on her husband, she didn't go have it killed so her husband wouldn't find out. She said, I am with child. Matthew 1, 18, she was found with child. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5, you know what God told Jeremiah? He said, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. He knew Jeremiah, John the Baptist's mother. You know what God told Jeremiah? He said, I ordained you and called you to preach while you are still in your mother's womb. God's had a plan for that little baby. Hey, right, listen, for every woman here this morning that's expecting child, and I know there's some of them, one of them hallelujah shouting about over there. Right, but I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, God has a plan for that little baby already. God has a name for it. God has a will for its life. They've got just as much right to be born as you and I here this morning. And we are inviting and asking the judgment of God on our country. We kill them babies. You say, well, I can't have a woman that couldn't afford to raise it. There's people standing in line waiting to adopt them. There's probably 40 people in this church that take an unwanted child and raise it for you. You listen? You know what God told him? You know what God did over there in, in John the Baptist? See, Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. And Elizabeth got pregnant first with John the Baptist, Jesus' first cousin in, by the flesh. Now, when she was pregnant... Mary, got the angel announced to Mary, you're going to have a child. And this child is going to be like nobody else's child, the baby Jesus. So she goes over and said, I'm going to go over and tell my cousin that I'm finally expecting a baby. I'm pregnant. So she goes over and says, Elizabeth, guess what? I'm expecting a baby too. She said, really? I'm six, they'll only be six months apart and they'll be cousins. How wonderful. And she said, guess what? The angel said he'll be called the son of the highest. And he's, he's a Messiah. My baby's a son of God. And guess what happened? Little John inside his mother's womb. Bible said old John heard. He can hear it. what it said. Old John kicked his mama belly button about right there and went, Woo! Hallelujah! The Messiah's coming! Now, Elizabeth said, The babe leaped in my womb. When he heard the, the news that the Savior was coming. All right? You know what abortion says about our society? It said, listen, there was harlots, prostitutes in Solomon's day. Both of them got pregnant, and, they, and they, one of them, child was dead, and they fought over the live baby. 
prostitutes in the Old Testament had higher respect of life and standards than doctors and nurses and politicians and lawyers in this country. We're, hey, hey, we're asking for God's judgment on us. You know what God, before Israel was taken out of uh, Egypt, they were doing? Killing babies. You know what they're doing at the first coming of Christ? Killing babies. You know what one of the signs of the end of a generation is? Killing babies. Do you know what partial birth abortion is? Where's the reality show? How come they don't make a reality show and show it in the public schools what a partial birth abortion is? You know what they tell them? Oh, it's, it's no big deal. You can get this done and we'll take care of it. And, you know, try to make, her, make the poor teenage girl think that it's no big deal. Partial birth abortion is when the babies went so long that it, some of them, many of them could be born and live and have. Some of them even survived abortions and grew up. Scott Peterson is in prison right now for killing Lacey Peterson and the unborn child, and they charge him with double homicide. Please, nobody in California email us about hypocrites. You talk about hypocrisy. If it's wrong for Scott Peterson to kill that baby in his mother's womb, it's wrong for a doctor to do it and get paid for it. And all God's people say it. I'm telling you this morning, our country's in trouble. We've got to get back to God if we want Him to take care of America. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we're in trouble. Listen, I got, I got news for some of you this morning. And I'm patriotic. I believe in our country. I respect the flag. I believe, but God is not an American. God don't get chill bumps when He hears the Star Spangled Banner. God don't stand and salute the American flag. Brother, he, he's higher than that. He's greater than that. And if we want God to bless, America's not special. Some of you get mad when they hear me say this on the Internet. The Constitution ain't inspired. It's a great document, one of the greatest ever written beside the Bible, but that book right there is what God's Word is, and the Constitution's good because it's based on that book. America ain't nothing special. God will wipe us out just like He can anybody else. We don't repent and get right with God. No military protest can stop us against the judgment of God Almighty. I don't care how strong our military is. It don't matter. We better. Hey, uh, listen, I'm just going to call up and say a few things this morning. And all I can do is tell you, sit there and buckle your seatbelt because it's going to get a little bit worse here in just a minute. Number three. First, they knocked the Bible out of our kids' lives. Second, they said, kill your babies. Partial birth abortion is where the baby is partially born. And they turn it around so that everything's out of the mother's body. I hate to be so graphic, but our kid, they, ain't gonna, they won't tell them the truth. Everything but the head. The doctor holds the head, takes, a, takes an instrument, and sticks it in that little soft spot right there into the baby's brain. They put a vacuum cleaner in there and suck its brains out while it's alive and kicking and throw it in a trash can. And that goes on. You can't tell me that you believe that's right. Number three. And this one do us in. You know it as well as I know it. It happened one year ago, June of 2015, when our government for the first time in history, sanctioned same-sex marriage and says marriage is no more what the Bible says or what we've always believed it. Marriage is now between... Any, if two men love each other, it is just as right. You have no right to say two women love each other. I know y'all are sick of hearing this. I know it's all over TV. But I'm telling you this morning, brother, we, we didn't get to vote on it. How come we didn't get to vote? We didn't get to vote on the Bible being thrown out. You know why? It wouldn't have got thrown out if we'd have got to vote. We didn't get to vote on abortion. You know why? Because people's against abortion. We didn't get to vote on this. We had it crammed down our throat. But I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, God is looking and God can judge and will judge our country. Gay marriage is not a marriage. Gay marriage is a counterfeit marriage. Real marriage is a man and a woman. That's not my opinion. That's what the Bible says. I'm telling you this morning, if we don't do what God wants us to do, God will bring the judgment just like He did on the Old Testament saints. No nation, no nation that bans God's name from school and kills its unborn and knocks the props out of the very foundation of our society can survive. 
You say, well, Brother Danny, you're not politically correct. Praise the Lord. If you're politically correct, I feel sorry for you. If you're politically correct, you are biblically perverted. You cannot believe the Bible and be what they can. Well, all right, let me tell you something. You know, we're, pro, we're pro-life. I'm going to tell it to you straight now. This ain't the way they talk on the news. You know why people come hear me preach? Because I talk plain. So you can understand me. You're going to understand this, okay? If, 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 if we're pro-life, they're pro-death. Right? We believe in letting it live. They believe in killing it. Let's be fair. Let's be honest. Let's tell it like it is. Put on a reality show. Show them what an abortion is. If we're the far right, they're the far wrong. If we're politically correct, you're biblically correct, uh, perverted. If we're straight, they're crooked. That's telling the truth like it is. I'm going to let you hear, get it ready, Noah, about 55 seconds of a news report that came on the news just the other night. You got it ready? Make sure it's got plenty of volume. Go ahead. Crank it up. If you are now, or have ever been, a parent to a 15-year-old, you know just how impressionable and fickle they can be. Keep that in mind as we tell you about a shocking new policy in one western state that would allow 15-year-olds to have sex change procedures done without parents even knowing about it. Here's correspondent Dan Springer in Oregon. 15-year-olds in Oregon can't smoke, give blood, or get a tattoo, but now they can get drugs to suppress puberty and even a sex change operation without their parents' consent, and the government will pay for it. It is trespassing right. on the hearts, the minds, okay. and the bodies of... Now, that was a law. Just you, you can't keep up with the laws that's being knocked down. This week, you'll hear more stuff. Check out a... A thing on YouTube called Jason A. Jason A with a capital A. The guy keeps up with it from a Christian perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, we did you know that the NBA, National Basketball Association, was supposed to have the 2017 All-Star Game in Charlotte next year. That was the schedule. That was the plan. And the city that hosts the NBA All-Star Game that's hard to believe, they say can take in right around $100 million. Motels, restaurants, ball game tickets, $100 million. And the NBA gay-friendly leadership has now said, we ain't going to Charlotte. And they canceled it, making Charlotte and North Carolina pay, lose $100 million because the governor said he didn't want gender-neutral bathrooms and signs on the bathroom. Now, you'll be surprised. You will be surprised at the people who say, oh, my goodness, why can't we just get... I mean, that's a lot of money. Our state needs that money. Our state needs money. I got news for you this morning. Listen, God's able to take care of us without them coming to Charlotte. Hey, a nation that does right, God will... Oh, it, you think it might be an accident? I don't know. I'm not saying it is. But I'm saying, thank God our mayor at least stood up for what was right. And Charlotte said no. And North Carolina became the life and stock of the United States. Bruce Springsteen canceled his concerts. Everybody said, no, North Carolina's a bunch of hicks. North Carolina's a bunch of right-wing extremists. North Carolina's a bunch of Bible-thumping. And I'm going to tell you what. You know what God might have done? God might have just looked down and touched that old boy down yonder preaching in Burlington and said, I'll just give the revival to down there in North Carolina. I mean, I don't know, but I'm telling you this morning, brother, God's on the throne. He's the one that weighs the action. They've had hundreds of people saved by the grace of God. We better remember who's in charge of this thing. The Lord might have sent that revival down there. He might have said, I think I'll just bless North Carolina. Thank God we live in North Carolina. Thank God we're hillbillies that believe the Bible. That ain't nothing to be ashamed of. God have mercy on us, people. We ought to be proud to say, I'm a Christian and I believe the old book, the blessed old book. We ought to be proud of that. You say, well, 
One man said this. He said, well, I can't help it if I'm attracted to my same sex, so I must have been born this way. And that's what they've convinced our country. They've convinced the government that I was born this way. I'm attracted. I can't. They say, what are we supposed to do with these feelings of being attracted to the same sex? What's a pedophile supposed to do? Yeah. A pedophile is attracted to little kids. Should he act on his feelings? we going to legalize that next? Probably. Probably. It's already coming in other countries. They're probably already talking legalized pedophilia if the child is, quote, willing. God help us. That's yeah. sick and disgusting yeah. and abomination to God. Then they're going to marry their dogs if, if they feel attracted to their dog. Yeah. See, the bottom's knocked out, people. Society's crumbling all around us. You people that have kids in public school, you're going to have to do some mighty hard praying. You're going to have to get the Word of God in their heart. You're going to have to teach them because in a few years they're going to be made fun of at school if they're not bisexual. Remember me telling you that. You believe it's all right if a man wants to live with a pedophile or a pedophile wants to shack up with a kid? Do you? You believe that's right? And they're going to say, oh, no. Well, you are an inconsistent hypocrite. I'm telling you, our country's in trouble this morning. I'm going to say in closing, what do we do? Jesus left us here for a reason. If God didn't want us on this earth, we'd already be gone. So why are we still here? Two things. Number one, Matthew chapter 5, the Lord looked at them people and He said, you're the salt of the earth. God wants us to be salt in this earth. You know what salt does? It keeps stuff from rottening. You're the salt of the earth. People like Shining Light Baptist Church. You know tonight, this morning, they'd shut this place down if they could get away with it. People in our own government would shut me up and shut... You know what they're saying? I'm spewing hate. That's what I'm saying. It's all right for them to spit on Christians. It's all right for them to talk about us like a dog. But if we say one word against... Listen, we don't hate nobody. We don't, there is not one person on this earth that I couldn't go to that altar with this morning and put my arm around them and pray that God will help them. Not one! But we are not going to say something right when God said it's not right. Can't do that. The king in the Old Testament set forth the direction of the nation. We are two things, salt and light. Salt and light. Sometimes salt burns, but light shows the way. Listen, we are not, you, God didn't leave you here to make money. Now, I hope you do and pay your tithes and give it to God and do work for God. I hope you do. But that is not our purpose. Our purpose is to be salt and light. Salt and light. Salt and light. He said this to me. I went to a jewelry store. All of you have seen this. And this girl wanted to look at a ring. And the jeweler said, that one right there? And he picked it out from under the, under the glass case like that. And he put a black felt cloth on that counter. And he did that for a reason. And he put that ring on there. And boy, he said, it knocked your eyes out. They said, the darker the background, the brighter the jewels would shine. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you all something this morning? The world's darker than it's ever been before. There's never been a time for us to shine for Jesus Christ like the day we're living in. Never. Never. We saw that little church down there Friday night. Packed, jam full. Go to church. Get your family in church. Daddies, read the Bible to your kids. Mama, teach them what's right. Witness all your neighbors. That's what we got to do while there's still time. Push push back against sin with one hand, that's salt, and tell the old little story with light, the other hand, that's light. Salt and light. There's never been a greater time to shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't get caught up in the world. It's like a big river. It'll just suck you on down with it. Make up your mind. But Jason, if, I want you all to come back just like you did a minute ago and sing that song. While they're getting that song ready tonight, for this morning, I want you to search your heart and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You say, well, preacher, my husband's not even saved. What am I going to just say, as for me, I'll serve the Lord. You say, preacher, my mom and daddy won't even live right. 
What do I do? Just say, as for me, I'll serve the Lord. Look, we all got problems. Everybody's got problems. We could all, I could stand up here and give you five reasons why I shouldn't even be preaching this morning. This happened, that happened. Got my feelings. I mean, all day. Quit. Get off that junk. You ain't got no excuse. You hear me? You ain't got none. Let's get in this altar this morning. I invite every Christian that would pray for our nation and pray for our own selves. Just say, God, help me to stand for what's right. If you listen to the world long enough, you start thinking they're right if you don't ever read that book. The book's what keeps you straight and the Holy Spirit inside you. He's, he's the Spirit of truth. You know what I've done this morning? I've showed y'all light. Show light. Let's do something about it. If you're here this morning, let's stand. Let's stand. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, why are they saying? You get out of your seat and make your way down here this morning. Let's do business with God. Let's say, God, make my testimony right. God, help me. Help me to raise my family. God, help me to raise my babies. Let, God, help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. God, help me this morning. God, help me. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. Let's do something for God this morning. Yeah, man. Amen. There's hope for our country. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble myself so much and pray. more that I Yes, amen. But all I really yes, come on this morning, young lady. Come on. Get down here and get your heart right with God. You come on right now, ma'am. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Come on, sir. You obey God this morning. Come on, mama. Come on. Better. Hey, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Better get her heart right. Come on, right now. Get out of your seat. Come on, right now. Let's obey God. Yeah, man. Thank God. Thank God. Let my life be a reflection Lord of God. your grace. Hey, man. I can't go back, but I can live for you today. Go ahead and sing it, y'all. Come on, sir. There are so many things. Come on, ma'am. Hey, it's going to get to the point where you can't ride the fence. It's too wide. Too wide, y'all. It's too wide. Let's do what God wants us to do. If life was just a show, I think I'd hit everyone. Yes, man. Hallelujah. But you can't refill the hourglass. Yes, thank God. Sing it, y'all. Glory to God. So here I am. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I want to witness to my family. I want to witness to my neighbors. Let me love. Let me love. Woo! Glory to God. Let me give myself away. Use my hands. Amen. Use my feet. Go ahead. All I have is yours complete. Say, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. My, my, my. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Back, but I can live for you today. Sing the second verse. Listen now. There are so many Why do you think all this stuff's happening? All these killing. I'm, cr people going crazy. Walking in church and just shooting and people. Lord, you know why? God's hand pulled back off our country. His protecting mercy is being pulled back because of our sins. Right, that's right. Show, that's exactly right. But you can't refill the hourglass of time. Come on now. Obey God. Here yep. I am. Use me, Lord. Give yeah. me words yeah. Words yeah. yeah, glory to God. Here I am, Lord. Let use me, love. Lord. Use me, me, Lord. Me Tell him you want him to use you. Me me Tell him this morning. Still praying up here this morning.